Hello and welcome to another UniDeck tutorial video. I'm Michael Marty from the University of Arizona and I'm excited today to tell you about the newest module that we've released in UniDeck, which we're calling UP or the UniDeck Processing Pipeline. So if you open up UniDeck, uh, you can see this is version 6.1, which will hit the web soon. Um, there's this new window here for UP and if you click this, you can see we're gonna open the UP window. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit to fit my uh, magnified browser screen. So the idea behind up is you can kind of see this looks a lot like a spreadsheet. And so the idea here is that we want to be able to load a spreadsheet and deconvolve a whole series of files and then do some sort of analysis. And we'll see an example of this in a second. But this is really motivated by people doing high throughput analysis, especially with um, online uh, separations or direct infusion sort of models where you maybe put in a 96 well plate you have your sequence of files and you want to analyze them all at once. And the great thing is now UniDeck can do that in this very um, well integrated system. And it's also, I would say on the back end, very flexible. And so feel free to go and modify the source code, add in new types of analyses. Uh, it's really a framework that you can build upon and you'll see hopefully as we go how um, flexible this is. So you can see um, when we launch the up window, there's two major uh, columns in this spreadsheet format. The first is sample name and the second is data directory. And um, the key thing is that these names uh, are really specific code words. And as you name columns in Excel, as we'll see in a second, uh, it's really important that you know what these are. And if you forget what they are, there's a, I would say, somewhat useful help file that you can open up and this will describe, you know, all the different parameters that you need and all the different things that you can do. Um, including this uh, workflow here and all the different things that you can modify with that. So um, just keep in mind that that help file is there and definitely don't, um, don't hesitate to use it. So um, you'll see the, let's just, so there's sample name and there's data directory. If we want, we can go ahead and just add some data files. So under file, you'll see there's open and there's save. That's gonna be opening and saving Excel files, which look like this spreadsheet, but there's also then adding data or clearing the frame. Um, so if we wanna add some data, we could go in you can see this is a large data set here. We could go pick uh, a few files here and open them. And you can see now it's gonna fill in the sample name, it's gonna fill in the data directory. We can go ahead and run all. And uh, you'll see in the background it's running. It takes about a second per. And uh, it'll turn green when it's done. You can see um, we've hidden one of the columns. So this is one of the things here. It'll automatically hide the data column, the data directory column. So if you wanna see it, you can show it. Um, there's also these other hide and show things, which will be more important when we start doing more sophisticated analysis. But it's, it's added this column called reports. And if we click in here, you can see we can open up this report, which is an HTML file. So you can share this with collaborators or with other people in your organization. And it's just gonna open it in a browser. And the cool thing is uh, we put in a lot of work trying to make this a really neat interactive tool. Um, and so you can sort by things like area or by mass. So this is a sortable table. Uh, you can see here are the main figures of the deconvolved mass and then the uh, mass over charge spectrum with the markers on it. If you wanna see the parameters that it's using, you can click here and it'll drop down and show you all the parameters. There is an option for doing an interactive plot where you can actually zoom here, but there's a few bugs with the underlying libraries that we're working on. So we're trying to get those fixed. Um, but that's a little out of our hands. So um, you can see this is just to give some context, this is an example with the bispecific antibody. So we have the different uh, chain pairings and you can see the data over here. Um, one thing you can do is you can do open all HTML reports or you can double click on a specific one, um, but it's really useful sometimes to do the open all and it'll just pop open all your windows and you can kind of quickly scan through here and see how your files look. Um, Okay, so that's the very basic version. I would say also just to highlight another few features, you can, if you wanna go back and make some modifications, you can run a selected one. So you might just wanna run one line at a time. Um, there's also the ability to open it in Unidex. So if you wanna open this file and play around with it and kind of see what's going on in Unidex, you can see actually it's, it's clipped a little bit here. So you might wanna go change those parameters. I'll show you um, right now it's actually reading in the parameters from the last deconvolution, right? Um, because we set this up to run with some very specific settings, as you'll see in a second. Um, and if we don't wanna do that, we can tell it, don't use the already converted data, don't use the previous settings. If you uncheck this, it will reconvert the file every time um, and it will refresh everything from scratch. And so if we do that, run selected, 
and then um, double click here. You can see now it's zoomed out and it's lost all of these previous settings. It's no longer too zoomed in. So that's just one tip um, that you can use when you're operating it. Um, other options here on the main menu, you can see we've tell, told it to deconvolve the data. That's kind of the standard. You'd want to, you know, if you're running data from scratch, you want to deconvolve it every time. Um, that's great. But let's say you have a set of data, you've already converted it, you've already deconvolved it, and you just want to change some of the settings for how it's picking the peak and analyzing it. Um, you can turn that off and that'll save a lot of time. So it can just batch process through everything really quickly. This is our interactive reports button. I mentioned, um, let's just go ahead and see an example to see how it does. I'll turn off the deconvolved data just so we can run something really quickly. Um, there we go. Let's open this up. Now it's gonna make these new um, interactive plots and you can see we can zoom into these. Um, it does kind of work. There are just a few bugs in there that I don't like and I'm not totally happy with. Like that should be zooming more uh, appropriately. But in general, this gives you the ability to give these sort of plots to collaborators and they could uh, play with them themselves. Um, but again, we're still working on that. So that's kind of the main interface and uh, how you might use it. I will point out also that there are things like you can rename these columns or add columns um, or sort them or do various things. You can also do the same with the rows. You can copy paste this into Excel. There's a lot of stuff here, but really um, as much as I've tried to make a functional version of Excel within this window, it's nowhere near as powerful as Microsoft's version. And so the real power of this is that you can uh, create files in Excel and put your own stuff in there. And so here's an example I'll, I'll show right now. This is that bispecific antibody sample. Um, you can see here we have the sample name, we have the data directory, but then we've started to add in a bunch of extra columns. And this is where that help file will come into play. If you look back at the help file, you can see all the different options you can add for these various um, code words. So for example, start time and end time. If you want uh, the default in Unideck is that when it reads the file, it averages all the scans together, but you may not want that. You may be doing some sort of online buffer exchange and you want to slice every time from three and a half minutes to 4.9 minutes. So you can specify that here. Basically when it does the conversion, it's going to slice that and average together on only that specific range. So those are these uh, purple parameters here. The ones that I've marked in blue are parameters that deal with the config file. So these are basically deconvolution settings. So we can set the peak full width half max. When it picks peaks, whether uh, the settings to use for the window and the threshold, we can also set the low M over Z, the high M over Z, the low mass, the high mass. There's other ones in here, and you can see those in the help file, all the different potential options that you can put in. You can also put in a config file setting where if you wanna set a very specific config file and then load directly from that every time you can. Um, if there are settings that you'd like me to put in that you don't see, just send me an email. I'm happy to add them. It's about four lines of code to add in uh, a keyword and that configuration setting. So um, these basically all would let you do very sophisticated deconvolution and do some manipulation there, but um, it's just giving you the deconvolved results, right? It's not really doing any data processing. And the power with up is that once you have the deconvolution, you can do some really cool stuff with it. And that's where um, we built a very uh, specific workflow for basically saying, um, let's take a look for specific sequences and specific mass pairs and see if we find them. So I'll walk you through how that works here. Um, we have a series of data file, uh, sorry, a series of um, keywords that basically specify what's the tolerance. So we're gonna combine a bunch of masses and say, um, what's the tolerance for the, the match? In other words, um, you know, something has to be within 20 Daltons of the matched mass to actually count as a match. We can also put in a file to add variable mods. Um, and I've got an example here. It just is another Excel file saying name and mass. And so we can put in, you know, a series of different variable modifications that it'll put on such like glycans or phosphorylation or other things. Um, finally, there's a way of specifying whether you want it to, to default to the closest match. So in other words, maybe there's a couple similar matches within that area. Do you want it to take um, the closest mass or do you want to take the correct mass or the closest incorrect mass? Um, again, take a look at the help file. It'll explain all of this. So um, that's just kind of setting up the world. Um, now what we're going to do is specify our specific parameters. So here we uh, code these by including the code name sequence. So when we say sequence and then give it some sort of name, that's telling it this is a, an object that we want to search, right? So we have sequence LC1 and HC1, LC2, HC2. 
And you can give these as masses, which they're shown here. You could also give them as amino acid sequences, right? So you could have the amino acid sequence of your different proteins pasted in here. You could have a mix. So you could basically say sequence one could be your protein sequence with the amino acid sequence. Sequence two could be a drug, say, that you're adding. And um, once you've specified the different objects that we have to work with, then we need to go on to these pink settings, which specify either correct masses that we're looking for or incorrect masses that we don't want or something that we know exists that we just want to ignore, right? So in this case, we're looking at bispecific antibodies. So we want to say the correct pairing is sequence LC1, HC1, LC2, HC2. So one of each of these things. Now we're also want to see, are there any incorrect pairings, which would be, um, let's say LC1, HC1, LC2, HC2, or sorry, uh, LC1, HC1, LC1, HC2, right? It's just a way of incorrectly pairing that antibody. We could also look for another pair here that's incorrect. Um, we could specify any number of these that we want, as long as we include the word incorrect with a capital I in the um, column heading. That's our keyword that we're looking for. We can also specify as many correct as we want, right? Um, and then finally, we have our ignored, right? We may want to ignore just these half antibodies with LC1, HC1, or LC2, HC2, right? So again, there's three key cohorts you need to know, correct, incorrect, and ignore. And within each of those cells, the way you specify is by saying seek, S-E-Q, um, and then you give the name that's specified after here. So experiment, try it out, see what you, what you get. Um, let me show you what this looks like when we open this file. So if we go back to up here, we can, instead of loading data, we can open a file. Uh, let me just try first just showing you how you can clear all. So if you clear all, it's just gonna get rid of all of that. Okay, so uh, we're gonna try opening a file here. So we're gonna go file, open file. We're gonna open our short sequence. And you can see now it's filled in all of the different parameters that we had in that Excel file, sample name, data directory, all of these things. And you can modify here if you want. Again, I think Excel is a lot easier to use, but if you wanna just adjust parameters or add columns, you can do that and then save it back uh, to a new file or over the original. Um, so you're gonna see there's all these different things that we had in there. Now, let's go ahead and run all. So it's gonna take a few seconds here to run all. Now, uh, you'll notice what it did automatically was get rid of all those parameter columns. So um, you can see if we wanna see those, we can do show, but let's go ahead and hide them. Um, we see our sample name, we see it's reminding us that it's doing the correct mass. And then these are the things that we're looking for. Um, now you can see we've added a bunch of new columns here. So what you're seeing is for each of these different correct and incorrect pairs, we now have something that says height and percent that goes with it. So this is basically saying, um, what is the overall height of that particular species that we found? And it's actually the sum type of all possible variable mods within that. So if you have multiple variable mods, it will actually add them all up and that'll be the combined height. Um, it'll also show the percentage. So basically um, the percentage of all the, the signal that is not ignored um, that we can assign to that particular thing. And here you can see the, the correct bispecific is about 82% here, 75% here. It'll also look for the heights and the percentages for these incorrect or mispaired ones. So you have the, mis the incorrect here, you can see about 12 to 19%. Um, we have the other one, which is a little bit lower, kind of maybe four to 12%. And uh, sorry, this is the height. Um, the percentage is, is sort of here like five to 15 or three to nine. Um, we can hide those if we want to don't, don't want to see the height columns. We can also hide the percent columns. Um, and then if we don't see those, what we're left with then is our report here. So then we can look at this and you can see now in the report, it's colored a little bit differently. Um, green is the correctly paired. Red is the in, incorrectly paired and yellow is unknown. So that's just totally unknown signal here. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and then look at the results. So it's gonna create a results file that goes with this. It's gonna look a lot like that, except now that we have these total things here. Um, we're also seeing uh, the correct, couple extra columns here. We have the correct percent matched. Um, we have the correct percent, uh, incorrect percent match. Um, we should also some more see, um, sorry, the reason that we've lost these, it's probably easier to see on this window, we've taken out these percent uh, columns. So if we go back here, you can see um, in addition to each of the species, so 
you know, the half antibody ignore, all of these have their own percentages that we pulled out. This is the total correct. So um, just in this case, we only have the one correct, uh, but the total incorrect is combining both of those mispaired. Uh, and then the total unmatched is saying how much percentage is unmatched. And if we go back to our report, you can see the unmatched or the unknown peaks are presented in um, yellow here. I believe the ignored ones are gonna be presented in blue, but we don't find any here. So basically this is a way of, of essentially quickly going through a file um, and processing it and finding all of the things that you wanna look for, whether they're um, specific amino acid sequences or um, specific like drug bounds. So if you wanna do this same sort of experiment now with looking at drug binding, you would maybe put in the protein mass as Seq1, you put in the drug mass as Seq2, you could say correct is Seq1 plus Seq2. You might say incorrect is Seq1 plus Seq2 plus Seq2, right? Adding two drugs if you wanna look for exactly um, one bound. So there are lots of things that you can do. And of course, um, because the source code is all online, this is all free, you can modify it yourself. You can put it on as many servers as you want. Um, one thing I'll point out is that we did uh, recently release a Docker container with uh, Unidec in it. So if you want, you can run the Unidec Docker and then you could say something like um, python-m unidec.batch. Batch is the engine that runs under the UPP. And then you could say file and then give it your Excel file. So basically um, you can run all of this in a Docker container or you can run it on your own desktop. Um, just to show, we do have some example files like this large one. You can see this large one has about 114 entries. So that's like larger than a full 96 well plate. Um, it's able to run this in just a few minutes. And um, so it's really quick and it'll pop up all this analysis and then you can take it and do whatever you want with it because you have an Excel file. So I hope that's been useful. Um, feel free to send out questions. I realize um, you know, this is maybe a bit of a confusing set of features because it really is meant to be very flexible, right? It's designed that you can just put in columns in Excel or leave them out and um, hopefully the help file will give you a good start. But if you have ideas and suggestions or questions or run into any bugs, um, please send me an email. I'd love to hear from you and I hope this is a useful feature. So uh, thanks and uh, happy deconvolving.